Uh, let me just share my screen. Uh, sure. But I believe that you'll have to stop your sharing. <clears throat> okay, hello all, and thanks for having me. My name is uh, Lukas Biegaj. I work as a system architect uh, at a software house in Central Europe. I'd like to talk about how AP6 has provided solutions for project needs in a specific unnamed ongoing project that I took part in. I will also mention where we encountered problems and challenges and how we were able to deal, deal with them. Every or almost every project that I participate in has the same functional requirement. It needs to support HTTP protocol to either expose some kind of API, provide a web interface or both. There is a wide range of solutions that allows us to fill that requirement. Most of them are tightly connected to existing programming frameworks. For example, um, Spring can expose HTTP in Java applications, Express.js in Node applications, Django in Python, and so on. A challenge arises when one needs to support multiple backends, needs to be able to scale the web application, provide fault tolerance, or support path-based routing. So the typical solution to serve HTTP traffic is to just use an HTTP server or HTTP reverse proxy, like an H Apache HTTP server or Nginx or HA proxy. Most of them support almost all of the requirements described to that moment, and some of them can be augmented with additional software. For example, varnish can be employed to deliver caching mechanism. These are the typical solutions that I, and I believe many of you, are already familiar with. We use them in many projects. We use them in uh, hobby projects, commercial projects, in on-prem locations, in cloud, and in Kubernetes clusters. Nowadays, almost every project is deployed on a Kubernetes cluster, at least uh, almost every project that I took par uh, part in. And that's really great. The biggest advantage of Kubernetes projects to me is that the developers have so much better control of their environment. For example, let's say they want to expose their new backend application at some endpoint. Before Kubernetes, they had to escalate an issue to a DevOps team for them to configure the load balancer. Now they can just provision an ingress object and the configuration provisions by itself. The rapid Kubernetes development cycle also encourages experimentation with new technologies. And let me state the obvious, some people love new technologies. The thing with developers is that they often come not with a problem, but already with a solution just to be accepted. One of the solutions that I've heard many times is to just use the API gateway. Like for example, a de developer came, comes to me and says, hey, we need an API, API, API gateway. And I ask them, what for? We need to route traffic to multiple applications based on URL path. And my answer to that is that their existing load balancer can do that just fine. You don't need a, a separate API gateway. Other times they say that they have heavy HTTP queries and their responses change very rarely. So they should use an API gateway to deliver a cache. But like in the, the, this example, they already have a CDN in front of the application so they can just use the cache control headers to leverage caching and they don't need a separate component uh, like an API gateway. Now, that does not mean that one should not use an API gateway. There are legitimate reasons to use one. Let's talk, let's talk about them. So the first use case that has legitimized deploying an API gateway that I've personally stumbled upon was on a Kubernetes cluster being used by multiple dev teams. Each dev team had been deploying their own application, microservices, using uh, different language, uh, different frameworks, and different libraries. They all connected to deliver one solution, and they all shared one common requirement. All public endpoints 
had to be secured and authorized against a common identity provider. Here's a simplified diagram of that architecture. The load balancer routes the traffic to three different microservices. Each one uses different technology and is maintained by a different team. Each microservice needs to support common authorization. Each one needs to validate user requests and needs to include a logic whether to process the incoming request or not. This situation warrants a use of common authorization point. If we offload the authorization to an ingress load balancer, then we can greatly simplify this architecture. Microservices don't need to worry about authorization and can just assume that if they received a request, then it has been already authorized. If something changes in the authorization method, developers don't need to worry about that. And most certainly they don't, do not need to rewrite their code. Uh, we can just make the change at the ingress and process request as usual. So how do you achieve such a configuration at load balancer level? That's a great use case for an API gateway. And that was my first case that warranted deploying one. After a quick look at available IP gateways, we have chosen the Apache IP6. There are many reasons to choose this specific solution. For me, for us, the most important were the support for multi-tenancy, the cloud native architecture, many available plugins and easy extendability, the Kubernetes integration with work in progress to support the gateway API, and probably most importantly, that it's an Apache Software Foundation project with a great community. The decision was easy. And the installation and configuration was quite easy too. We have used the available hand charts and gave our dev teams permissions to provision and manage AP6 root objects. From the get-go, they got the ability to provision their own routes with custom plugins configuration, the mentioned authorization, and so on. Of course, there were a few challenges to solve. At first, the available hand charts did not suit us completely. Fortunately, we were able to fork them uh, to make our own changes and later get them merged into upstream via pull request. The AP6 dev team was very responsive here. The second challenge uh, was with at CD. The AP6 hand chart uses a bitnami subchart for uh, at CD and we had problems with it forming a correct cluster after our restart. At the moment, uh, we're using a separate etcd. The AP6 hand charts allows us to do so. Uh, and I guess we'll be, we'll be submitting a pull request after we identify the problems with default configurations. I'm sure they will be incorporated quickly. Last challenge was an organizational one. The cluster and the AP6 was being used by many different teams. Uh, arrangements between them had to be made to decide on common path uh, configuration, the common URL configuration, and ways to use the AP6, so one team won't be interfering with another. Uh, arrangements in this matter are verbal at this point, but in the future we might introduce an admission controller to enforce compliance with the rules. So how does that work at a technical level? Dev teams manage and use helm charts for their applications. Helm charts contain manifest for every object needed to successfully deploy the application. Helm release installs those objects along with AP6 root objects exposing selected services via an AP6 gateway. AP6 service controller that works in a different namespace 
manages APC root objects from all the namespaces and provisions the configuration onto the AP6. And of course, the AP, API users can communicate with exposed services through an API gateway. From my perspective, the most important thing is that the applications manifests are held, stored and versioned and also deployed along with the definitions on, of how the application is exposed via API gateway. Uh, let's dive a little deeper. The outcome of the decision is that of deploying the API 6 in the cluster is that the API 6 became an API gateway of choice. The authorization was offloaded from the Apache API 6 uh, from the microservices level to the Apache API 6. Less code had to be maintained by dev teams and many existing API 6 plugins already found their use. For example, Prometheus plugin to provide observability or Revrite plugins to facilitate routing. I'd like to show you also how does, does, one, does an example application looks. Here's an example repository containing an application to be deployed to Kubernetes cluster and to be exposed via an API gateway. It consists of uh, the source code of the application. It's, uh, in this example, it's a Node.js application, so it has a server.js file and some additional package files uh, that are just needed to run the application. There's a Docker file that can be used to, to either build that application locally or build the target Docker container image to be used in the Kubernetes. And also there's a values file which provides several attributes that are specific for the application. And it also describe how the app has to be exposed through the API 6. To deliver an application like this, developer just needs to deliver a Docker file along with a values file looking like this, obviously with correct paths. And after triggering a standard GitLab deployment pipeline, the application will be deployed, on, deployed onto the Kubernetes cluster. The IP6 will take care of exposing defined services in the way that developer wanted to. The key conclusions from that project is that AP6 is really easy to use. AP6 greatly accelerates application development and deployment. And that's the story of one project, but our use of API 6 does not end here. Uh, we are already deploying API 6 in a, in a few more projects and we are considering to use it to fulfill every other API gateway need. It is really a great solution. Are there any questions? Uh, sorry, yeah, thank you. Uh, it was really interesting and I was actually uh, kind of <clears throat> listening to your talk uh, with a great uh, surprise that uh, uh, you were just describing very good technical moments, how this API 6 solved uh, your problem. And my question is kind of uh, how long did you spend uh, to make this uh, for experimenting first, you, you know, you first uh, try API 6, right? And if it uh, fits your need or not, and then you would uh, try to develop something new, integration and plus testing, uh, if it's already kind of working solution for you. I mean, a, a proof of concept deployment to just test the waters and check whether the IP6 uh, suits the current needs, yeah. I believe took only a few days. Uh, yeah. The preparation of a deployment pipeline and so on took a few months and it's still a work in progress. So, but uh, after having the need to install an API gateway, the tests of API 6 were very quick. We were able to very quickly ascertain that, yes, that's the solution that suits us completely. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Thanks a lot, yeah. Okay, 
Thanks for, for listening uh, and let me pass my voice back to the AP6 team.